We are Cactus Wrestling. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. You heard it here first on Cactus Wrestling that Shane Griffith just took out Carter Starachi. I can't are believe we, Are we filming now? Or is oh, this... wait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Uh, so <laughs> Michigan versus Penn State. I'm keeping that in, by the way. Michigan That's versus fun. Penn State. So, I mean... Let's like Michigan could very well be the number, what three, three. four, like, ten, three or four, maybe. Yeah, three. Yeah, probably. Big ten. I was probably number two. Yeah, I was definitely number two. Nebraska, maybe three. Yeah. The way, no, the way, no. you know, Iowa kind of Nebraska's like Nebraska. top ten, but yeah. Well, anyway, I mean. So we're just going to break down some weights and uh, kind of talk about some of the matchups. Uh, so, I mean, just jumping right in. All right. Here's the thing. Braden Davis, he's undefeated. He's the last 125-pounder that's undefeated. But who is he beating? Only good guys. His that, only that... substantial win is Brandon Kaler. He beat him 11-6. to six. Blast doubled, doubled him three times. But Dominant. Brandon Kaler looked like doo-doo. I don't know if it was more so Braden Davis is that good or Brandon, K Brandon Kaler just cut weight wrong that week because he did not. He looked like a shell of himself in that duel. Wasn't prepared at all. Well, he didn't adjust to the match. He got blast doubled three times in a row. And That's true. You're not even really, really good sluggish. takedown. Davis has gotten that takedown on a lot of guys. I mean, he, he also had the quality win over uh, the guy at West Point. I don't know his name, but. He was ranked at the time. Oh, Bergink? Yeah. Oh, Bergink. Yeah. Five, Berg that was five to Berg one. Berg. That was five to one. I mean, people cheer Jen Jared Frannick and he wins like by one every time. They're like, look at this beast. Well, Jared undefeatable. just lost. But Lucas, so... he was also undefeated and he was a very close wrestler. Same thing with Real Woods. Not a big point score. Yeah. Real well, Woods only has that one trick, as some guys have commented. <laughs> one trick pony. One trick pony. Uh, this will be a good test for Braden Davis, though, with Michael Diagostino, though. Uh, Diagostino, six and one on the year. His only loss was to injury default against Brett Unger. Who Jacks Forrest also beat. I guess you got to worry about that injury default from ba uh, Davis against Davis. Hey, we all know that Penn State loves to injure guys, especially Mitch Messenbring. Especially Mitch mess. Don't put that into the world. That's messed up. Uh, I mean, my money would be on Diagostino against Davis. So they both they both wrestled and beat Tristan Lujan this year, and uh, is that something to brag about? Well, so Braden Davis beat him four to two, and uh, Diagostino beat him seven to three. Mm, let's see, look at that. Such so a the, you know the why the the margin of victory was higher for Diagostino. Also, Diagostino is an All American. He's established. He's a sixth year Isn't guy. Yeah, two time All American. Yep. No, I think he's just uh, a one. I think he's a one. He was... Oh, and last year he was ranked in like the top five and, yeah. and didn't even win a match. He took fourth to twenty twenty and uh twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. But we already have Kaler has. I mean, um, you know, Kaler was an All American. And he lost to uh, you know, Braden Davis. Kaler wasn't an All American. Kaler was not an All American. Twenty twenty one, pretty sure. Um, oh yeah, you're right. Twenty twenty two, eighth place. Yeah. What? Was he? Put some respect to my boy's name. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, he 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 was a shell of himself. The announcers were were talking about it too. He was in his. Not taking anything away from Braden Davis, but I'm I just think. Saying. Why I give Braden Davis the edge is that he's able to get to his takedowns really well in his matches, and he's able to not just get in, but he converts. He like he finishes well. Mm. Um, I think we've seen a lot of his. If you guys have watched a lot of his Penn State matches, he's got a very high rate of attack, and he's not only shooting but he's scoring. And I think that's been a huge thing at 125 is the ability to actually convert on these takedowns because it's been such a crapshoot this week. Um, he's been tough on top. He gets way on bottom. I think he's got a high pace for a young guy. I could see him squeaking out a win here. It, you know, I don't think it would be crazy to say he wins. I, I mean, I don't think it's crazy to say he wins, but I'm still picking Diagostino. Lowe does have him ranked 14th, three above 
Bray, uh, Michael D'Agostino, who's at 17. Yeah, we, we well, we've talked the rankings. Low rankings, you're right. As we know, the rankings are, are all that matters. And, you know, Flow is very much well known for their, you know, high quality rankings. So, um, yeah, comment below who, who's who's winning this one. Uh, it'll you, be a good test regardless. You guys are going decision for Diagostino, right? I, Major for – no. <laughs> I think Diagostino is capable of winning. It's going to be at Michigan, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, in, a, it's yeah. in Ann Arbor. Yeah, because the, yeah. they're wrestling Michigan State as well, I think. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep, yep, it's at Michigan, yep. Yeah, so, you know, that's just another thing in favor of uh, the Wolverines. <laughs> um, I can't First wait for the people in the comments to, to come back after Braden Davis wins and be like, oh, it's funny, funny how this ended up working out. I'll be hey, right. Guys, did you see the box score, guys? You were so wrong. <laughs> Not me, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys, we'll hedge, you know, hedge our guesses so that at least one of us is correct. Every that's day. it. Somebody's got to. Somebody's always right in this group. So, um, what about Dylan Ragason? Because that's pretty big news. He's that bursting he, back onto the scene. That's actually a huge match. I mean, you have Ragason versus uh, Nagao. You know, two guys ranked like in the top five. I think, like that's gonna uh, be a really good. Flo's got him four and six. Yeah. Uh huh. Whatever. It's close enough. Hey, don't eat that. Don't eat that. Yeah. So uh -huh. they've never wrestled though. They've never, they've never matched up. Well, and Ragason's never all American either. Nagao yeah, has, but he's he's fresh off the scene. He got the call. Chris Cannon's out. He yeah. has been, he's undefeated this year. Won Midlands. Um, that's true. He did win Midlands. So, I mean, I, mean, only I, I wouldn't be surprised, like or that surprised, if Ragason eked out the win. But I, my pick would be for Nagao. Nagao's only got the one loss, and it's against Crookham. And it was, you know, six to four. Like, he's right there with, you know, a guy that I believe beat Vito by more points than that. Yes, so, I think he um, did. Yeah. I think Nagao's looks great. Ragason, you know, making his debut. Who knows how he's been feeling where he's at. Um. He's going to make a splash, knock off Nagao, and go about I mean, his day. If he's going to do it, it's in front of a home crowd. Yeah. But I still think Nagao's going to win. But I think well, this is another toss up, but I'm going to go with Nagao again, Penn State bias, whatever you want to call it. Well, you know what's interesting? Nagao lost to Chris Cannon last year. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't like Michigan, huh? So if Chris Cannon is in uh, Raggison's corner, you know, oh, well, actually, you him a thing or two, then that could be a matchup thing that could potentially. Yeah, Chris Cannon's going to just give him the look, and then N Nagao's just going to crumble. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that'll be good, another matchup. Um, Bo Bartlett, Sergio Lemley. I mean, Bo Match Bartlett up. probably the Bo favorite. Bo will win there. in like the most like slowest possible way. It's like by a point. Like, There's no way this dude is winning a national title. I'm sorry. I don't this know guy, about a national title, but he'll definitely be an All-American. But this guy, like, God. He, he's, I don't know. I, I guess he's in his videos weeks. where he can do backflips. He is so athletic. And you see almost none of that on the map. Yeah, it, it doesn't translate at all. Like, he's doing some incredible, and even, again, watching him for when he was in his high school at national, you know, prep nationals and whatnot, like, I was like, wow, what an incredible athlete. Like, so intense, so amazing. And then you see, like, his Instagram, his YouTube. It's, like, all these crazy, like, uh, tricks, which, uh, you know, like, cartwheels into backflips, like, these crazy flips and and rolls. You're like, wow, like, he's so athletic. And then you're like, wow, a one to, you know, four to one match where you got to take down an overtime against the number 30 ranked guy. Like, <laughs> Cleveland Belton. Yeah, I, I, I Bo is going to win, in my opinion. I don't think there's anyone that, you know, from Michigan that's going to beat him at 141. But it's definitely not going to be like this crazy, like, wow, what an amazing major tech pin. Like, it's just going to be like, oh, you know, 7-2. to two. Yeah, I agree with that. But. I got I got Penn State 9-0 right now, in my mind. And the, you uh, know what? I could see that happening. Yeah. Honestly. That's the scary thing. Um. Now here's the thing. At 149, 
is this Tyler Kasak the real deal? Because he'll have Austin Gomez. Do you think Austin Gomez is going to go? Or do you think they're going to have uh, Dylan uh, Gilcher? No, I think Gomez is going to go, but I'm... I'm I wouldn't they put that... Gomez in this match. Gomez hey. likes the big matchups. Because I was I was watching... Um, I was watching Kale's interview, and they're bringing 15 guys, and they said it's going to be up in the air if Braden and, and Kasak wrestle both matches. Mm. And Kasak... We might see you know, Kurt McHenry in that first match. K, you know, Kasak has had a lot of matches this year. You know, seven matches. Mm. He, he might be getting worn out. Get this dude retired. <laughs> might be getting worn out after, you know, almost getting to double digits. Oh, yeah. You, he's got to start slowing down. That's a lot for the Penn State, you know. Yes. Seven matches. I think that he's I I always liked Tyler Kasak. I thought, you know, another guy that I followed through high school. Um, you know, watching him tech Graham Rooks the other day, who actually gave uh Shane Van Ness of a, a scare at Nationals. You guys remember that last yeah, season? He was at Nationals, match. so Rooks hadn't turned it on yet. That's it. Um, and then he also beat Nash Singleton as well. Two, you know, guys ranked, but in the lower end. Um but Gomez is a bit of a different monster. He, but uh, there's so many like things I'm curious about with Gomez. Like one, how serious has he been, t- you know, training his folk style Two, like, how's he feeling at it? I mean, he's a guy that, although he's on Mexico's national team, a world team, I guess. Um, I know that he's dealt with injuries. If his goal is to win the Olympics this year, how serious is he going to be committed to a folk style season necessarily? Hmm. Um, just cause like, it would suck to be Austin Gomez and have like, oh my gosh, like I, you know, I, I tore my ACL or something in a match in January. And now I have, I'm, I'm going to miss the Olympics. Like my, my, my actual huge overarching dream. Um, no, I think he wants to put the screws to KSA. This is the only match that I think I would give Michigan the edge. I would give Michigan the edge here for the second time. Oh. Well, and remember that uh, Gomez has beaten Shane Van Ness. Yes. He's beaten a lot of guys. I mean, he beat Lovett, Murin, Yanni. I mean, he's beat, he has a very impressive hit list. He does well in duels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you? What would you have Gomez winning by? He's going to score at least 10 points, but he might also give up six points. 10? He's going to score 10, but he also might give up nine. I could, I would say worst case scenario for Penn State, I think it's still a decision in for Gomez. I don't think KSAC's going to get major necessarily. Mm-hmm. Although Gomez is a big guy on his feet, and the three-point takedown with four backs could be really interesting for him. He is a big feet back guy. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, he goes for broke with the throws, so. So, um, 157, Will Luan, as far as I know, is still injured. He hasn't wrestled since Cliff Keen, so we might not see him versus Levi Haynes. Well, if it's not Wait. him, then it's going to be a murder. Yeah. Well, It'll know. be a murder, but Levi Haynes has not really... He looked as great. He is, yeah, he's been humbled this year by a well, couple of guys. Well, how many how many matches well, did he have last year? I don't know. Levi but, Haynes was 25 and 2. See, I think that did him better than having what what is he, 7 and 0? 7 and a lot of time, a lot of time off. Yeah, I think he did better with having 27 matches compared to 7. I think the other thing for Levi and I we actually might have talked about this in a video a while ago. There were rumors last year that he was too big for 157. He's like, oh, yeah, like I'll never be 57 again. I'm going 65 next year. And with Miss, you know, Mitch Messen bringing the lineup now, he's like, well, I guess I'm going 57. And I almost wonder if he's cutting too much, and that's why his performance is lacking. Because, ah. like, last year he was, you know, high pace, very Jason Nolf-esque, scoring a lot of points. And now he looks, like, lethargic. Um, granted, he did have that, you know, leg injury that we saw early in the year. You wonder how much that still plays a factor. Um but he just looks tired, and I'm wondering if he's just cutting too much weight, um, which is not a big thing for Penn State. So I'm kind of surprised if that if that is it. If he's well, he's going to go 74 next year. So <laughs> he beat Willowon in the duel last year, 
three to one in overtime in typical Will Luan fashion. Yeah, Will Luan probably... will probably uh bring him to overtime again if he is in, in the lineup and then lose. I feel like Will Luan has got to have like the most minutes of anybody ever wrestled. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he always goes to overtime. Every, yeah, every one of his matches is nine minutes <laughs> <laughs> at a minimum. The nine minute match, Will Luan style. You should drill, like do that with your uh, your high school teams and just be like, yep, we're doing a Lawan match. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't tell my guys this, but a lot of the time when I say live match, instead of doing 2-2-2, two, 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 I do 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Yeah, I do that in my youth. So, Oh, you just spoiled do, it now. because the, the Yeah, anybody who's watching followers. this. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Secrets out. It actually kind of sucks for youth i don't know if, you know where you guys watch from but like some of my youth kids wrestle one 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 for their period yeah, because they're so young. and i'm like oh like a seven minute match that we train all the time they can't even use their conditioning yeah because yeah. they're three minutes yeah so they're like oh we can just keep a high pace and i was like oh man like if this was like two minute periods we would be so we would be winning even more frequently like <laughs> so um what do we think about 165 this one's going to be by tech. very interesting. By tech. So, okay. I don't think Camamine's been teched ever. No, you I looked wasn't at teched it. ever? Cam- Camamine has never even been bonused ever. Okay. Well, you know who wasn't ever teched? That Leva- that uh, Mitchell Messenbrink teched last week? Oh, Matt Olgin? Never been teched in his career. Six oh, years yeah, of wrestling. Yeah, but Will um, Camamine has never even been bonused. But he'll get majored. He's never been bon. He's never been majored. And he'll be majored. Ah, no, I don't think so. No, I think okay, mess and bring by decision, in my opinion. Like joking aside, I think that um, I mean, this, this is a good measuring stick to see if uh, how good mess and bring is because Amin is a fourth from last year. He's a multi-time All American. Like if he can beat Amin, then he he's starting to enter that conversation of maybe he is in the mix to get to the finals. I maybe. think. Penn State guys do well against Michigan at this weight. I mean, look at how Kamamine did last year. Who did he lose to in the same in this exact duel? Facundo, who's not even starting. Yeah, yeah, he did in the tiebreaker. Yeah, that was a surprise uh, that he lost to Facundo. I just think that like the Amin family struggles a bit against Penn State guys. It's just bad luck. I mean, you have Aaron hey, Miles Brooks, Amin beat Brooks one time. In the hey, Big Ten Finals. He has a Big Ten title forever. That's a big... Didn't, that's didn't a beat big him in the ball. duel and didn't beat him at the Nationals. We forget about the duel. The Nationals probably stung, but... So, Caleb... Um, not Caleb. Yeah, Caleb Fish just beat Cam Amin. Oh, yeah, oh, Fish. Fish is going to do some a horrible tank. season. But <laughs> Caleb Fish wrestled Terrell bear claw earlier in the year and got pinned in overtime and he was a penn state guy and it terrell bear claw this goes this comes full circle terrell bear claw lost to mish mess and brink eight to five this year so, so this is going overtime and and terrell bear claw is going to come in with the overtime off the thing. top off the here's top the thing. rope here's yeah the off thing. the top rope here comes the bear claw Here's the here's the thing, uh, Mitch Messenbrink, yeah, he's he's been bonusing everyone, but besides Matt Olgin and I guess Brevin Casella, like yeah, these aren't really any ranked win. Like he hasn't really been battle tested by any like top top guys, and this is a three time All American that he's going to be up against. I mean, he's a he's a world champ and a world silver medalist as well. Yeah, well. yeah, but that doesn't always translate. No, but I but at 74 kilos, it typically does. I mean, look at who the previous 74 kilo world champs have been for the juniors. You have a certain guy named uh oh wait, let me see. Who should I start with actually? Okay. Keegan O'Toole won it, and then before that was David Carr, before that was Mark Hall. Like it's just a lot of like talent at that weight class. Oh. So Cam Amin's gonna win, is what you're saying. I think that Camamine is going to have a hard time keeping pace with Mitch Messenbrink. And Mitch but Camamine gonna... beat the bull. It is true. And nobody beats the bull. <laughs> Especially at Big Tens. Except... No one at Big Tens beats him. 
other other tournaments, those you know maybe, but yeah. Well, I just I'm think, Big Ten champion, <laughs> the bull. So, I think yeah. Weston Brink is just going to have a high pace, and it's going to allow him to get the one takedown he needs in a close match. Comment down below who's winning this one, Messin Brink or Amin? I think Amin. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the mean too, uh, but what are your what's your score predictions? Any score predictions or just like by like decision or like ten eight, uh, ten eight? Oh, I was gonna say like six four. Six four sounds more accurate. I feel like this is gonna be really tight. What in ten eight's not tight? <laughs> That's too many points scored. They're really oh, open, really no. tight, as in okay. That's like oh, I think it's gonna be Both thirty to twenty eight. It's like okay, well, that's like super high scoring, but a tight match. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Mike, do you have any um, thing you want to say about Shane Griffith versus um, Carter Strachey? I'll give you the floor first. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I know I had been in previous videos saying that Carter was going to lose to Shane. But based on from what I've seen from Shane and what I've seen from Carter this year after the season started, the, the, Shane's going to probably get murdered here. He's probably gonna get give up like at least a major. Oh, I think major is probably fair. I think Shane Griff Shane Griffith is gonna be tough to score on. I don't think he's gonna get teched. Um, but Carter's been like raging against people. Yeah, he he's yeah. And yeah, also, and he's, what seven matches? Definitely, he's, he's been raging through those seven matches. Hey, yeah. what he did to to uh, Makai Lewis. Yeah. Was hey, fair, but stunning. six matches doesn't count as a match either. Doesn't count as I'm a match. I'm giving him too much credit. Six yeah. matches. He's six and oh. Oh. Yeah, because that one doesn't even count. And he has either pinned or teched every single person he's wrestled. Yeah, but, but I mean, okay, Travis Whitlake, that's a that's a big win. Nick Icontrera, fine. That's but Luke Rada, Thane Lawrence, Eric Schindel, and Robert Major. I mean, he he texted Travis Whitlake. Travis Whitlake was ranked like number five, right? No, yeah, no, I, I'm, yeah, I said that. But but I, I just no, I think he's gonna at least major Griffith. Shane Griffith has never been bonus in his career. Man, a lot of these Michigan guys are gonna set some new records for not so good stuff. <laughs> so maybe it'll be. Uh, he's a national champion. I, I maybe don't, it'll be seven. He can't one. ride that anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's like everyone's like, well, AJ Ferrari's a national champ. Yeah, and he almost he lost to Zach Lazier. Yeah. He That's did. right. Crossover he did. video. He a loss. Crossover oh, video. What's up? Yeah. Uh -huh. What's up? I don't the think the whole video is now gonna be just comments about that one snippet, too. That's the best part. They're gonna be like, AJ Ferrari, you're you know, you're get your testosterone levels checked if you don't like AJ Ferrari. <laughs> I love that one guy's comment was so funny, dude. <laughs> I don't think uh, Shane Griffith is going to win, but I don't think it's going to be a tech. And I honestly don't think it's going to be a major. Get oh, at me. Interesting. I, I'm going to go with major. I think that this Eight is going to be his first non-tech or pin of the year. I think he's going to get a major. I think Carter's not going to be very happy about it. Um, and it's going to no, be funny he's because gonna, he's going to work He's going to add him to the list with uh, you know, Washington. Washington. Who ducked him. Oh, yeah. Well, wasn't he injured? Or no, he wrestled the, the couple days before, right? Yeah. So like he he yeah he just he, he followed. Was like nah, up. it's like I'm not doing this, man. Carter was like yeah, probably leaving him like nasty voice. <laughs> well, no, you know Carter's turn to leave. He's he's going for the Hodge this year. He's he's, he's like, actually been doing super well with like the sportsmanship stuff. Like he's been seen all over the place. Like super nice guy. It's this you know the Carter arc that no one expected. Yeah, the Carter. Yeah, but he's gonna need a little instead bit of more going full DeSanto. He's uh. He's gonna need a little bit more than six matches to. Uh, to That's win true. Yeah. Um, so, a couple matches left. Um, I guess we can skip ahead to heavyweight. I mean, not to overlook. I mean, Bernie Truax versus Jaden Bullock. Bullock has a nice win over Dylan Fishback, so it could be interesting, especially since Truax hasn't really looked himself. I guess Kale said he was sick last week. Maybe that's why he looked off, but. That's I, no think, offense. I still think Truex will beat. Yeah, I th I yeah, think. He'll, he'll, uh, you know, decision, but you no. Know. 
Yeah. And then Strig out with the big upset. Yeah, Strig out is obviously going to win that one, so we don't have anything to talk about there. <laughs> and then uh, Greg Kirkley versus Lucas Davison. What do we think about heavyweight? Major. For I mean, Davison? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He Why clear- is that so hard to believe? They've wrestled once before. It was five to three. Yeah, but the way Kirk is, I mean, I know. I don't know. If you're basing it entirely off of that Wyatt Hendrickson match. I am, dude. That was like, I was like, what the heck is going on but, here? I know he was. Sort what of- if, what if, what if Wyatt was just like still injured and he was like at 50%? What if he got Wyatt his head was run. faking it the whole time to build up car, uh, you know, confidence for Kirk? So when he wrestles him the next time, he just crushes him. Why I mean, long last, time. Why did you see that Corey Day got pinned in 30 seconds? So, like, by long Wyatt Hendrickson? Time. Yeah, and Wyatt Hendrickson hasn't had a match go longer than a minute and 41 in his last five matches. And Corey Day is ranked in, like, the top 15. So, that's kind of an impressive uh, win there for Wyatt. I think Kirk is just on a whole different level this year. I think that he's been wrestling out of his mind. Why has eleven um, pins? And one of them was against getting pinned by uh, Kirk. What? Didn't Kirk pin him, or was it a tech? That does not count as a pin for Wyatt. <laughs> I'm trying to make a joke. <laughs> um, I think that it's, I think major for Kirk. I don't think it'll be a major. Three takedowns is nine points. Okay. I'm assuming yeah, I mean, Davison's getting at least two escapes. So it's nine to two in one period? You think he's going to get three in the first period? I think he'll get two in the first period. Mm, I'm skeptical of that. This is, a, this is a guy who lost to Tony Cassiope in overtime. Who? Lucas Davison. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Kirk hasn't lost him in years. <laughs> Big Tony Cassio. Hey, Davison got pinned by Hendrickson last year. That's true. So just think about that. Bam. Lucas Davison is a two-time All-American. Tough. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I don't think. I don't think he's. He gave play. a younger Bastida a close match, five and five to three. That was yeah, yeah. Bastida's really separated himself from a lot of the other heavyweights out there. But are you are you not saying that that Kirk is six points better than Bastida? Am I saying he's six points better than Bastida? Yeah. What was it? You said it was five to one against Bastida. Five to three, I think. Hmm. Well, that's let us know that's, a, that's that's <laughs> two takedowns and you know maybe a ride out. Well, and Bastida's a, a machine with the takedown. So if he's struggling to take down Davison, I think Kirk's going to struggle. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Wait and see. Let us know down below what you think between Michigan and Penn State. Are these Penn State wrestlers the real deal? Let us know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching Cactus Wrestling. Thanks for watching. We are Cactus Wrestling, and we'll see you next time on our next video.